Hello folks, this is Perspectives on High Performance Computing in a Big Data World, the first part. This was given at ACM HPDC 2019, the 28th conference, which uh, actually I had set up the first conference, but uh, with my usual fickleness, I did not commit myself to lasting 20, 28 uh, years, whereas Salim Hariri, who founded it with me, has, uh, was far more determined and successful. So anyway, I'm telling you about high performance computing, actually, which was certainly thriving and an active area when we started these conference series. And I'm going to tell you what happened to it and what can happen to it in a big data world. This is a version of the presentation which is longer than, um, than um, another ver the original version I gave. It has a few additional slides which I had to drop due to space. And so this is the complete story. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy it. Good. Come to the outline, but before I do that, I really want to express our gratitude to the National Science Foundation, who through two grants, the uh, DIPS grant, which is in its last uh, formal year at the moment, on business produced middleware and high performance analytics libraries for scalable data science. It does what I call um, HPC for machine learning as its dominant trend. But towards the end of this grant, we realized the huge importance of this alternative uh, uh, complementary approach, machine learning for HPC. Then we also have the engineered nanobio node 172025, part of the uh, Nano Harbor network, where we actually, uh, with uh, a colleague of mine, Vikram Jadeo, we uh, did some of the work we'll describe on using machine learning to enhance nanoengineering simulations. So after that uh, grateful acknowledgement, let's discuss the outline of this talk. Uh, we start off with a discussion of communities, because we all sort of work in peer groups or communities you know, for our research. And you have to, when I started, I was in a physics community, a so-called phenomenology in physics. Then I went to maybe parallel computing and computer science. Now I'm somewhere between big data, clouds, and um, HPC with a smattering of machine learning. And these are all communities, and those communities have members, uh, processes, and expectations, and consensus as to what's an important, and things like that. Um, so we'll discuss the status of these communities. Then we will discuss a really major change over the last few years, namely the rise of industry as a major, major force in research. Uh, I remember when I started in parallel computing, um, probably uh, 35 years ago, industry was not a major research place. It was a, it actually adopted parallel computing, especially with startups. But, um, and those startups were all done by leading researchers, but uh, the mainstream industry did not have a major research impact. Nowadays, in all areas, from HPC to clouds, to big data, to edge, to machine learning, uh, they all, uh, industry has, is a major force in both research and of course in development. The uh, last major section, which is the largest, is on machine learning for systems, which is a term brilliantly invented by Jeffrey Dean and Nips in 2017. And uh, I renamed that for, the, for a focused activity as machine learning for HPC. We will look at a taxonomy, a taxonomy of various ways it can be used, some examples of, of it being used, and then we uh, discuss some open questions. In fact, there are lots of open questions. I, I, State clearly there are hundreds of PhDs waiting to be garnered in this uh, in this area. So students listening to this should really look at this as a potential study area. I think it's very promising. Finally, we have a single slide with some very crisp conclusions. Fine. So let's now, after this, uh, this outline, get on to a discussion of communities. Thank you. Which is data on how the communities and interests of uh, communities is changing with time. This comes from my friend Quan De Pai from China. And uh, he uh, wrote this uh, 
intriguing presentation which had this data here comparing the number of papers published in the main AI conferences and uh, the number of papers published in the main architecture conferences. And there is a factor of 20 difference in favor of AI. And uh, <coughs> that's both in accepted and, and submitted. So I tried to follow through on that a little and produced a few further, further slides which confirm this trend. Um, this one here is um, discusses uh, four general areas which we'll get into a little more detail. The first I call is big data. There is a well-known IEEE big data conference. Uh, that's the purple curve, which is rising. They're actually rising quite a lot. You can't really see it because it's so low. But so, and its rise may not be quite so significant as it's so much smaller than the other curves. The red is cloud computing, which is slightly surprising in that the importance of cloud computing is increasing that actually the academic papers are declining somewhat. Uh, then we have um, the yellow or slash orange, which is the sum over a selected um, high performance computing slash cyber infrastructure conferences, the SC conference series, eScience, CC Grid, and IPDPS. As I gave this talk at HPDC, I left them off. Um, and then finally, the green curve is the dramatic uh, NIPS or NUR IPS uh, conference series, which is increasing, as Quinn de Pai pointed out, dramatically. Here, uh, here is a graph from uh, the AI index, which uh, shows that this is uh, not just um, a feature of NIPS, it's also a feature of all the AI conferences, where NIPS may be growing the most, because maybe because it's the most closely related to machine learning advances, um, which is the part of AI that's increasing most dramatically at the moment. But all parts of AI are increasing, as you see from this curve. ICML actually was not on, just finished this 2019, and if you just go online, you'll see the vibrancy of the field. All right, this is one way of trying to present a complete picture. Uh, I remember I, we're not including HPDC in this, um, this discussion because we gave the talk there. Another important cloud conference, SOCC, we were not able to, uh, to include because we couldn't find the data on papers. And so the clouds are not fully represented here. Um, so here we have uh, AI and machine learning jumping up. Here we have cyber infrastructure slash HPC declining. This is the sum over the ones I did. And below here, we just have a little mess, which we'll have to expand in more detail on slides that don't have these large, these large curves on them. And these cover the individual big data, uh, computer science, uh, I'm not computer science, HPC slash cyber infrastructure conferences. Thank you. Here we have a little more detail on uh, the non-AI conferences. Uh, the top one here is um, IPDBS. Uh, the uh, green is SC. One interesting thing is these go up and down quite a lot. Quite su surprising the conferences vary so much. Here we have the clear increase in big data. I actually was uh, at 2013. Um, the blue one is, and actually the later ones, but I remember the first conference in uh, Silicon Valley in 2013. Uh, this uh, orange one is a CC grid, slight decrease. Red is cloud com, it's a significant decrease. And um, cloud is the blue one, which is also declining. The lighter blue, which is eScience, is uh, not very large. All right, so that's, that's the details behind the sum curve, which showed us this, this, this increase for big data and the decreases for cloud and HPC slash cyber infrastructure. Hello, now we come to another rather different slide, which I took from AIindex.org, which gave me some of the uh, 
information on papers at AI conferences, but they got archived to present some nice data for them. Things started in 2010 and went up to 2017. And we see AI significantly increasing, and CS and all modestly increasing. Uh, so, and then if you look at total numbers, AI is actually sort of, I don't know, 7% of the total CS. Um, no, more like five uh, percent, and um, all is incredibly big, three million, and um, this just so this doesn't show us it doesn't show any decreases. So this suggests actually the HPC issues we're seeing are not particularly CS issues, and this increase here in CS is more than you would get from the increase in AI because AI is sitting down there at. Um, a significantly uh, reduced level, six to seven percent of CS. Now we have a little discussion of H5 index, which we'll show in detail on the next slide. This is the H index for the journal, or for the, in this case, the conference, calculated over the last five years. This particular plot was produced in July of 2018, presuming they'll produce a new one. Uh, this year soon, and it has the a plot of H5 index against the number of accepted papers, and you can see that there is a not not terribly surprisingly a significant correlation between the value of H5 and the number of papers. Not totally rigorous, but uh, it's uh, clearly significant. I don't think this trend curve is quite precise because it's such a broad range here, and then they, you might even say that the main thing is the one like this, with a few ones here not being quite, so actually which are all AI conferences, but not the AI conferences which are, are in the jugular, which is machine learning, deep learning, and things like that, which NIPS and ICML are in. Okay, that's the end of this. Uh, this now we all go on and look at H5 index for a bunch of conferences. Thank you. Here's another way of looking at it. It's the so-called H5 index. Um, uh, some of the conferences are below the cut. The cut here is 12, so eScience is not here. HPTC, where I'm talking, is here. Um, the top is the big AI conferences with NIPS here. Uh, I should say H5 is the H index calculated so that the conference was a person publishing over the last five years only. Here we have ICML, which we knew was number two in the earlier plot. Um, I put in these blue ones, which are just large non AI and non HPC conference, CHI, the well known HCI conference, um, Infocom, and the WWW conference. Then we have a whole stream of green conferences. And then finally, ISCA, which is actually in this, is in the same conference federated collection, which HBDC is the, um, when I gave the talk. ISCA is the first, ASPLAS, SC, HPCA, IPDPS, and so on. And then we have a, so you can see that, and then finally we have the top cloud one, which is IEEE cloud. Um, you should point out H5 may not be a totally fair index in that it's obviously easier to get a high H5 index if you have a lot of papers. So there are some reason to believe it is not a totally fair um, comparison, but it certainly in, it com confirms the trends we saw in the previous things, which were either attendance or paper submitted. Um, now we can look at a similar set of trends so here in Google Trends over the last five years. And here is some large things. Uh, we started, I started with artificial intelligence. And then I added security, which is sort of interestingly bigger. Although AI is growing, security is just uniformly important. I should point out in trends, you have um, so-called um, Topics, which means they look at everything around those words. And search terms, which means you have to be exact. And clouds, unfortunately, have um, 
obvious meanings about the weather, which means you can't, you have to really look for cloud computing. We'll come back to clouds a little later on and show that if you search for things like Amazon Web Services, you actually get a stronger indication than you, than you do here, where clouds are really ridiculously small. Also, big data is quite small. Computer science, which is the field, is solid. And now we are going to look at some smaller curves, starting with these two things here, which are pretty pretty tiny on this uh, this particular large graph. Remember that AI is much bigger than what we're going to see in the next slide. All right, here we start off with the top. And these are all normalized to 100 at the top. This is 100 up here. Uh, uh, the you know, largest entry in, a, in, in any one one thing represented here is 100. So here we have cloud computing decreasing somewhat with time, consistent with the conferences. HPC is more or less flat. No hint of the increase of AI. Um, grid computing is also in there, similar to HPC and with a slight decrease, but still actually fractionally above HPC. Edge computing is rising quite strongly, and supercomputing really doesn't enter into the discussion. It's much smaller than HPC, not surprisingly. It's a relatively specialized topic. In a pre previous slide, we showed cloud computing was actually quite small compared to artificial intelligence. But that might be an artifact of the, the, the cloud computing is not available as a topic, only as a search term, which means you have to type exactly cloud computing. That's because we can't use clouds as a topic, because clouds as a topic includes things that give rain. So if we look at uh, this slide here, we see some tr AI, the, which is this increasing nice trend as you expect. And then we see uh, some components of cloud computing, AWS, Azure, um, Docker, and Kubernetes. They're all growing, growing dramatically. Kubernetes is smaller, but probably growing faster. And uh, they are actually quite competitive. I mean, certainly, the sum of them is more than AI. So I, I think the previous result, cloud computing uh, as a search term underestimates the trend in cloud computing. And this suggests that um, the increase actually in AWS, Azure, and Docker are very similar to that in AI. So. I think that says, that, that says that the trend suggests that the cl cloud systems and um, AI are both increasing very significantly. Okay, here we uh, have another set of relatively small ones, but it's worth noting that Internet of Things, at least until 2017, was strongly increasing. It's, it's, uh, but machine learning lies below Internet of Things, but it's still it's increasing. Big data is sitting there pretty flattish in terms of interest. Remember, over that same time period, the conference expanded. Deep learning, not surprisingly, had a huge increase, although it's now maybe saturated in its, uh, in its hype uh, value. And poor old HPC is still sitting down there at the bottom. Not a very uh, vibrant trend in terms of Google searches, at least. Um, so notice when we can look at this graph that AI is 10 times big data. And terms like cyber infrastructure and exascale are too small to show even on this uh, graph of the smaller ones. So we, if we sort of summarize our lessons from the trends, uh, they confirm what we saw with the conferences um, and um, Indicate uh, flattish to, uh, with some indication. Not for, the trends don't show any decrease in HPC. Uh, um, with a, a growth in edge and Internet of Things, and a, a, a significant growth in uh, in machine learning and AI. So that's the end of this section. Uh, there's another. The video continues on a different section. Thank you. We look at some other small um, uh, themes, parallel computing, which is declared to be a programming paradigm, and then some uh, topics, high performance computing, edge computing, fog computing, and cyber infrastructure, showing um, 
The edge is increasing as we expected quite nicely, although it's still reasonably small. It's smaller than HPC. And remember, HPC was small compared to the big items like AI and even big data. So edge computing is down there as a small growing topic. Fog is not increasing uh, dramatically. It obviously hasn't taken off yet. And cyber infrastructure just really is not, uh, not, does not sort of exist as a search term. That's presumably because it's an academic um, term only. So thank you.